What happens with human beings is every thought has a frequency. Every thought produces a chemical. So if you keep obsessing about your lack, your lack of finances, your lack of time, your lack of energy, lack, 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 and, and you're taking thought, it's producing a frequency, and that frequency in the form of chemistry is storing that thought emotionally right in your second center. You feel guilty, you feel unhappy. The moment you feel unhappy, then you generate more thoughts equal to that feeling, which makes more chemicals, and you keep taking energy from the brain and storing it in the body. If you react to people in your life and you feel anger, frustration, whether it's traffic, the news, whatever it is, you're drawing from this field, this electromagnetic field, you're tapping that resource and you're making chemistry out of it and the field shrinks. So now, mm. by doing that and living in survival, the body no longer is a magnet. So now you have very little energy in the brain. In fact, 5% of the energy is in the brain and 95% is stored in the body. Now the body's been conditioned emotionally. So a lot of energy in the body, very little in the brain. We want to move energy back up to the brain. So. What does that do when we move the energy from the body to the brain or the heart? Well, this is a great thing because once it makes it here, it's going up, uh -huh. right? So we do these different meditations and these different techniques to draw that energy right up to the top of the head. Now, when this energy shakes loose and it starts to move, the sympathetic nervous system switches on. And instead of releasing energy out like you're being chased by a predator, that same energy is going up into the brain and the brain switches on and it goes into these very high, high frequencies called gamma brainwave patterns. Now the person has an arousal. It's, it's energy that's being that released into the brain mm. and you can only describe it as ecstasy or bliss. So the energy of guilt that was stored from thinking and feeling in the same way releases and it travels up to the brain and it's going back and when it reaches the brain what happens you get more energy in the brain and it begins to produce that external field so you're you're beginning to create a field around your body well once the energy is moved you're, you're you're going to feel you're going to feel pretty blessed in that moment in fact so we can transfer guilt shame insecurities can, into bliss oh my god yeah yeah we do it all the time and the, the amazing thing is that that rush of energy that's moving into the brain is changing the brain's physiology and producing that field. Now you have energy to heal. Mm. So now the body is a magnet again. And it's as the energy moves up the spinal cord and it starts passing through those spinal nerves and there's a lot of dynamics going on on the body, that energy that was once stored in, in that one of those energy centers that's released is energy to heal energy to create a new future. You're replenishing your field and now the body becomes more of a magnet instead of an inert piece of metal with no charge, right? So the person then who's reacting to whatever person or circumstance in their life, the stronger the emotion that they feel towards politics, towards the traffic, towards their girlfriend, Social towards their media, ex, whatever. whatever, the more they're paying attention to it. But where you place your attention is where you place your energy. What you're doing is you're tying up your vital life force. Mm. You're giving your power away to that person or that circumstance that you could be using to create a new life with. So when a person's sitting in their meditation, and I love doing this, we just had an event in Marco Island. I'm gonna take people further than where they normally go. I know they're gonna go, oh, well, I'm done with my meditation. No, you're not done. We're gonna take you to that point where that feeling is so in your face and you can't turn on your cell phone you can't get up and walk away because a thousand people are not getting up and walking away and you're part of the community. You're sitting in the fire and you have one of two choices. You can let that brain run on, on programs and hardwired patterns and you, the arousal will drive your brain further out of balance or you'll practice the formula. And as you lower the volume to that emotion, you're going to take your attention off that person or problem. Guess what? Here comes energy back to you. You're taking your power back. And now you're building your field that way. And when that happens, energy starts to move up into the heart. Once it makes it to the heart, it's going to the brain. So we start seeing people there. They, their hearts naturally open up. And all the things they thought they wanted when they came to the event 
They no longer want because they feel like they have it. Because they feel like they, they, they've got the feeling before the experience. So that they feel so whole that they no longer want. And, and they're not looking for their future anymore. You only look for it when you feel lack. Mm. When your body is conditioned emotionally into the future, why would you look for it when it feels like it's already happened? Now this is where it gets weird. Because now <laughs> things start coming to you and you're no longer in need. And okay, when it comes to you, you go, oh here, take it, I don't want it. I just thought I just wanted to know that I could create and people create a lot of wealth in our events. Yeah. And the first thing a lot of people do is they say, I'm buying a cruise for you. I'm buying you your car. Oh, mom, I'm getting you that house. Why do they do that? Because they're so excited. <laughs> they feel so amazing. And they're thinking, I could do this again. Why would a, a person in lack wouldn't give a person who's abundant? would give because they know how to create. So mm. now the game changes. It's no longer about the self. Mm. And you, you're, you're doing it because that you know that you can create it. So, so then maintaining that state, when you're in love, yes. when you're in love, in love. No, you're sure. not looking for it. You're, you're it. not looking for it. You'd be in lack. When oh. you're in love, there's nothing to do. You're in love. You're 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 the magnet. You you are it. And so you that You are love. Yeah, so that you that come into your life would not only be just a reflection of a relationship with someone that you wanted to be intimate with, you would have meaningful, loving relationships mm. that would enhance that feeling. And when it didn't, you would say, ooh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if this is right for me. You would, you would trust that because you worked really hard mm -hmm. to nurture this, to protect it, to grow it. Uh, to to trust it again, to open up, right? It takes a lot to do this, but we see men in our work. I was on them this week. I, I never let up on those guys. Mm. Big macho guys. You want to be? You, you want to know courage is? Let's go. Let's open that heart. And when they start cracking open, I mean, we see people heal from from colon cancer and from angina and all. Just boom, there it is. There it's not. That's what that's what's been stored all down here. Once they open this up and it moves, the body is transforming in that moment. Mm. It's, the, the system is informing itself. Information is being restored back into the body. So when you get to that point where you, you, when you're in lack and separation, time gets really crazy because mm. you want stuff to happen faster and it feels like it's taking forever. That's because you're in separation. When you're in love and you're in connected, you don't want the moment to end. I mean, I had four, three guys over for dinner last night, all these academics. I cooked a meal and a half for these guys, took out great wine. Why? I wanted them to be so caught up in the moment mm. that they forgot that we made a new memory. We, made a, we had a great experience. And life then is about experiencing it yeah. in love. Like, I'm not going to be guilty of what I'm, what I'm eating or judge what I'm eating if I've cooked a great meal. Let's eat because the guilt is worse mm. than whatever it is you think is bad for you. So then, when you're feeling those elevated emotions, and you're locked in love, then, then you see life through the lens of love, and there's compassion.
like you could look at your greatest adversary the person that threw you under the bus mm. and you've overcome yourself and you've done the work you'll look at them and you'll see a part of yourself that you used to be that you no longer are and you have nothing but understanding and compassion wow. for like wow i just i feel for that person they're, they're hurting they're struggling i used to be like that but you're no longer that People who are in love with themselves will find love in others. People who are happy with themselves will find something that they can connect with. They won't see all the flaws. They'll see some part of them that they want to enjoy. If you practice it, just feeling a little love every day, a little gratitude, a little gratitude every day, mm. I can prove to you, I have the research, your immune system is going to be so strong, it's going to be immune to any foreign agent. With gratitude. Just 10 minutes, 20 minutes of gratitude a day. What, yeah. what do you got? Not, not just to think about the things that you're grateful for, but to embrace them emotionally. Mm. Why? Because you want to practice feeling that. What's the, what's the emotional signature of gratitude? When you're receiving something favorable, you just received something favorable. Something amazing is happening to you or something amazing just happened to you that surprised you. What do you say? You feel grateful, right? Mm -hmm. So the emotional signature of gratitude means something amazing just happened to you. You've just, something just happened, or something is literally happening to you. Gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. Yeah. So if you finish your meditation in gratitude before the event occurs, your body as the unconscious mind is believing it's already happened to it's you. Receiving. And you're yes. in the state of receiving. So, mm. and what do you got to lose except your immune system? The worst thing that could happen to you is you'll heal. It's the worst yeah. thing that could happen to you. Yes.